And share it with another. I've got some help. It's Ross Garrison. Oh, everybody, come on. I'm glad you pushed your way. I'm glad you made it through the storm. Because you need to know that we are connected. We are family. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm family. You're family. And we are connected. Oh, God, yeah. We are connected to God, y'all. Listen to this. I'm family. We're 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 family. We're
wonderful blessings and so many open doors of rain. No mercy. new day that's why I praise you and for this I give you
We're grateful for this wonderful celebration of life, for our dear friend, dear brother, Sultan Banks, better known as Trax A Million, and family affectionately call him Sutan. We're here to celebrate and to look at his life and to review his life and to appreciate what he has accomplished and what we can hold on to, what we can embrace. Powerful, genius, musical genius, artist and producer, give a big hand for this celebration. Pray with me, pray with me. God, we come to this celebration. I know many are hurting. Many are in pain. Many don't understand. But we thank you for the life of Sultan, how he has accomplished so many great things. You work through him. You've worked through his hands, you've worked through his heart, and you've worked through his mind. God, now we ask that you work on the waiting family and friends. Work on their hearts. Work on their minds. Cultivate. Cover them. Bless them. Comfort them in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to get prepared to move on in the service. We're going to ask Deacon Kurt Jackson to come from Open Bible Faith Community Church, and then there. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to read the scripture this afternoon from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, beginning at the ninth verse, and it reads from my Bible, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God, for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God. From his rest, lest anyone fall according to an example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him of whom we must give an account. Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. We're going to uh, move through the program as it is prepared. And, uh, there will be a, a solo by Netta Riel, My Angels, a song produced by Trax A Million. There'll be special remarks from maybe those who are on the program here, Daryl Cudgel, the father of Sutan, uh, Alex Jimenez, Damone Carter. Uh, the obituary reading will be done by Bizado Bird. Um, we'll have uh, a combination of, of things occurring uh, 
while the montage is playing uh, for a few minutes, um, we'll enjoy it and reflect back on the reflect back on the life of Trax Million. See, I knew him. That's my nephew, and I knew him when he was Trax One Hundred. So. And as we're enjoying the montage, uh, we're going to ask you to begin. Those of you who would have remarks to line up on my left will be speaking from that microphone. Again, we'll enjoy the montage, and then we'll have you, as you're lining up and preparing, uh, the montage will continue to play, and we'll turn it down and listen to your remembrances. Then we'll have... Uh, a musical selection once more and again by the Emmanuel Baptist Church Choir and we'll have the words of life by our friend Pastor Mark Wright a benediction and a recessional amen and amen amen a solo Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. found was blind but now I Welcome, everybody. My name is Alex Jimenez. I was a close friend, uh, assistant, and a and for Sultan, Sutan, Traximillion. <sighs> you 
you know, when I first began writing this speech, uh, I had a hard time getting started. And it wasn't because I didn't know what to say or because I didn't have anything to say. It's because I had too much to say and I wanted to keep it short. I've known Sue Tom for over 24 years. So the stories that I could share with you are endless. I think a lot of them <clears throat> really would demonstrate who he is. I think we kind of know the gist of who he is. I wanted to kind of talk more about the, the person and not the artist. So I just went to the beginning and I thought about how he welcomed me into his circle, into his family, and eventually into his musical process. And I think about the last words that he said to me and how those mementos just kind of demonstrate a consistency, a consistency in his character, his values, and the love that he had for everybody. Now he introduced me virtually into everybody that I know here. Without him, I don't know nobody here. I don't have the love and the connections that, that he gave me. So I'm always thankful for that. But he had a way of making the, le the least person in the room, simply asking them, what do you think of this beat? Or what do you think of this song? And then at times using that feedback and incorporating it into his music. So I'm forever thankful of knowing him, being part of his life. So even up to his last moment, the last words that he said to me will forever, forever stick with me. And uh, what he said to me was, to your family. And try your hardest. That's a direct quote. And when I think of a story that he told me when he was younger, he told me that growing up, he never knew if his parents were fighting. He never knew if they were struggling. All he felt was love. And he thought of his mother thought of his father, he just felt love. And I thought that was powerful. I thought to myself, wow, what a, what a beautiful way to grow up. And then I thought about who he is today and kind of made the connection that <laughs> his parents had a lot to do with who he was. The love they gave him, the support they gave him, Honestly, it was something I, I have never seen. You know, we would be at his house um, all day sometimes, Brock, you know, making beats, just watching him go through his process, just literally in awe. Whatever the vibe was, it could change in a heartbeat just because someone made a joke or someone else said, hey, what about this record? And then bam, there we are making a different record. And at some point I would think to myself, well, Tina's gonna come in here and kick us out. You know, <laughs> neighbors are complaining, but she never did that. She would literally come in. Let me say this: grab the blunt from whoever had it. <laughs> say, turn it down a little bit, <laughs> and then leave with the blunt. <laughs> and so that that was the approval. That was all the approval we needed to keep going. <laughs> and um, I, just, I, I just remember those days. That, that's when I met him. I've known him since we were 18. And um, I remember being in that house with them. And, um, you know, 31, 31 Yuma Drive is just so <laughs> it incubated. It made so, so many of us who we are, I think, uh, artistically, just even as men. I mean, those were good memories that I think all of us still hold of that bond, of that moment. And I'm thankful that he brought me into that because I wasn't part of their, their group. I didn't grow up with them. Um, and when 
I connect all these things about the human side of Colton Bates. You know, it all makes sense. You know, his parents raised him in love. He moved with love. Um, everything he did musically was almost a different persona because he was humble. The most humble superstar you ever meet. He just wanted people to like his music. He didn't want the clout. Um, he didn't want extra attention. He just wanted you to love his music and respect it. And you know, we worked hard to try to make that a, a possibility. But in regards to who he is as a person, um, I want to close out with a quote. of the spirit and I'm going to list this these prefixes and just in the way here the fruitage of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faith mildness, and self-control. And if you really describe <sighs> So that's what I want you guys to remember about him. Uh, you know, aside from him being a musical genius, he was, he was a really good friend. And I'm always going to keep that um, last message with me to, to guide me and direct me uh, when I get lost. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. The last two weeks have been difficult for all of us. As we process grief and sadness, as we try to calculate the size of our incredible loss, my heart goes out to Sutan's family and all those who were present for the, the final phases of his life. For those that don't know me, my name is Damone Carter, AKA Dem One. I'm an old friend of Sutan's. We started a rap group in the early 90s called Lackadaisical with a, another fallen brother, Jesse Jones. Legacy. Today I'm hurting like we all are, but I'm also proud. Proud to say I was there when everything Sutan became was just a dream. Back when, because I, I did. But that I was there to argue, collaborate, Freestyling to an instrumental over and over again until his dad came in and begged. Proud to say I saw it in him at 16 years old. And everybody around him knew he had it. And also proud to say I'm a, a small part of the legacy that he leaves behind. Speaking of legacy, here are a couple of things. 
Sutan Tracks a Million Banks is the most important musical figure to come from where we come from. Not only did he put our city on the musical map, he put the city on his back. And he didn't have to do that. It was real quick to correct you and let you know where he was from. And that matters. Not everybody in the music industry does that. He single-handedly brought us from obscurity to relevance, which I'm 45 now, I've lived in San Jose my whole life, is, is no small thing. Yes, he had a lot of help along the way. There's a, a great community of, of family and friends and people who helped push him to where he got. But knowing him when I did was all his. and built a legacy without turning his back on his people. I think he knew how badly we wanted to be seen and acknowledged. He made sure that his success was not only for him, but also for us. Since his passing, it's been great to see the outpouring of love and respect for his work. I guess that's what they mean by somebody getting their flowers. The world lost a great musician, but we lost a friend, a brother, a funny dude who was always trying to make a joke at your expense or play a prank. For those of us gathered here and the world at large are left with a musical legacy which can be cherished forever. My homie was of the word. Nights when the weather is warm and the streets are quiet, listen close, somewhere far off in the distance hear it. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> we love you, Sutan. My name is Isidro Bird, and I'm honored to be reading Sultan Hanif's, Hanif Banks' obituary. Sultan Hanif Banks was born on February 26, 1979, to Darrell K. Kajol and Tina Banks, his mother who preceded him in death in Orange, New Jersey. When he was just a year old, they moved to San Jose, California. Sultan was a very happy child, was very inquisitive, and loved to dance. Growing up, he was very talented and always joking around. Sultan had a great childhood. He made friends wherever he went. Sultan exceeded in everything he touched. As a young boy, he showed a lot of interest in rap music and loved writing lyrics. He came from a musically inclined family. Both of his parents and his grandfather was a pianist. When he was about 10 years old, 
his parents bought him his first keyboard, he soon realized that it was more than just a toy to him with. He had developed a passion that he really enjoyed. And that's when the man. Sultan attended Andrew Hill High School on the south side of San Jose in the Seven Trees neighborhood. His music abilities began to evolve. Without ever looking at a sheet of music, he was able to play songs and piece together his own sound. He began experimenting with beats and soon realized his true passion. Not only were his parents amazed by his natural talent, his peers took notice as well. Before long, Sultan was getting a lot of attention from his friends and others who recognized his skills. He turned his bedroom into a studio and a lot of local up and coming artists were literally lined up at his front door waiting for their turn to collaborate with In 2000, he formed another group with his cousin, Rasan Rock, called Ace High, myself included. Later, Jason, a.k.a. Smitty Grands, Smitty Cuz, joined, and they became the High. All the while, he continued to create beats. One of Sultan's greatest joys is his son, Elijah Hanif Banks, who was born in 2002. Sultan had a strong bond with Elijah, and he cherished their time together. He loved him and was looking forward to being a grandfather to Elijah's twin boys, who are due in April of this year. He wanted to be called Papa. He wanted to be called Papa. <clears throat> in early 2000s, during the Hyphy movement, the name Traximillion was born. Between 2004 and 2005, Sultan collaborated with Bay Area Trailblazers to help create the hyphy sound. He was in his element. Sultan was notable, but truly put on the map when he produced Keek the Sneak Super Hyphy. His biggest project was Traximillion Presents the Slap. to this album as the, the hyphy. Over the years, he grew not only as a producer, but as an artist. No matter what Sultan to fans. Despite his affliction, he stayed positive, never complained, and continued to fight for his family and music. Even while in treatment, Sultan kept producing. Most recently, a song called I Stand On That E40 featuring T.I. and Joyner Lucas. The last album he produced was Sirens, released in 2021. Left on his family, but on the world. a self-taught musical genius come to cancer. And on the morning of January 2nd, 2022, he was called home, surrounded by his family. He will forever be missed. His
As we ask people to start to line up on my left, we want to start with the two-minute remarks from friends and family, and um, you know, out of respect of time and the family that's here, um, we want to just go ahead and keep it two minutes. I'm going to go ahead and start. <laughs> I know y'all see me running around. My name is Kiana Jackson. I am Sutan. I'm going to call him Sutan, because that's what I know him as. I'm his cousin, um, Jackie's daughter. Um, and um, my story that I have from my cousin is I, I think, um, I was going to remind you Tina's house. Okay, we're going to turn it down just a little bit more. Okay. So I was going to my Auntie Tina's house, and um, I remember a new Destiny's Child song had just came out like the day before, and I can't remember exactly what song it was, but, you know, I have a 12-year-old girl, I was singing it and singing it, or trying to remember what the words were. And I was going to the um, house, and Su Sutan had um, his keyboard, her his um, studio in the garage um, at that time. And um, he's like, what song are you singing? I'm like, oh, that new Destiny's Child song that just came out. And then automatically started playing it. And me not knowing about music, um, I was like, how did you do that? Like, the music's not even out yet. Like, it only came out yesterday. He's like, I, I listened to it. And I was like, what do you mean I listened to it? And he's like, I listened to it. I was like, you can play it by listening to it? I didn't know that was even a thing. And um, that just goes to show how talented he was, that it was in his DNA. Um, and that aspect about him not being able, or be, him being able to play a song without listening to a sheet of music um, was true. He exuded talents from his fingertips, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And I was proud to call my cousin. Um, 
I was proud to call him Tracks a Million too, especially when we were in high school on the east side of San Jose and we played the songs and I was like, that's, that's my favorite. Step drill team or whatever the case may be. Um, I always talked him up, but at the end of the day, to his core, he was a really, really good person. I have a very, very short second story that I'm not gonna get into, but I had an issue with somebody I was dealing with, an ex-boyfriend in, um, in Oakland. And I, told, I ran into him, I told him about it, and the very next day he called me. He's like, Kiki, what's that guy's name again? And I was like, why? He's like, I'm in Oakland. I was like, what are you doing in Oakland? And he's like, I'm looking for him. So not only was he my cousin, but he was also another big brother um, of mine. And he had my back 120,000%. And if you guys don't know anything else, um, just know Tracks a Million was one person, but Sultan Sutan was a whole different story. And that legacy um, will live on as well. Thank you. Uh, first, I just want to give all my love to I've been really praying for you. met because he would always tease me and talk mess and one day he, I didn't really know him like that yet and one day we were in the yard and he snatched my earphones off my head and I was listening to Souls of Mischief and he hugged me and he was like I'm in love and we were like inseparable from that day um, musically he was put on this earth to do exactly what he did um there's really no words to describe watching him create something from nothing. I used to just love to watch him do that. Um, he was my safe space from childhood to adulthood. Um, we were together in a relationship, you know, during high school, but we eventually just became family. That was like one of my best friends. I could always count on him to be there for me at any point in time in my life. And um, I know the world and I know the Bay Area know him as Trax a Million and he is a legend in his own right and deserves all of those accolades. But Sutan the person just had a beautiful heart, a, a magnificent spirit. Um, always in good spirits. I've never seen him down. Even in the most trying times of his life, I've never seen him down. And um, the thing that I will miss the most about him is his smile. He always smiled. He had the most beautiful smile and he just always made me feel special. He always made me feel just like safe and you don't get that anymore in this life so I just want to thank you Sutan for always being my safe space I want to thank you Daryl and thank you Tina for sharing some time with this world and I'm going to continue to pray for you guys love you Sutan dad was like best friends you know what I'm saying like like really best friends like like really best friends I talked to my dad about everything like everything and uh yeah, it just hurts that he's gone but you know I'm glad he ain't in pain no more I'm glad he not suffering no more uh I remember I used to just uh, sit in the studio like before I was older, watch my dad like make beats or produce other people and run sessions. And I was like, damn, like, I wanna do this one day, like, but I don't know how, like, <laughs> all that, all that, shit, all that, it looked, it looked like hard. I was like, I'm gonna do this one day. 
And uh, yeah, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Um, I, I really don't know what to say because it's too much to say. But I love my dad, and uh, I'm gonna keep his name lit forever, forever. Everybody know what's up. The whole city know what's up. The whole Bay Area know what's up. Like, go, baby. You feel me? You know, keep his name lit forever. And uh, yeah, I love you, pops. Sean Walker. I know in soon time, way back from the 80s, we go way back. We were uh, neighborhood kids on the west side, Paula Street's apartments. Um, I, I remember, I remember a lot about soon time. He is very positive. We were all knuckleheads back in the days. <laughs> Um, remember we all get into fights and we were friends the next day that's that's neighborhood kids for you um, yeah but he's a genius he is a genius not just musically just all the way around I remember going to his apartment and he's just reading a dictionary a whole entire dictionary and just learning different lyrics and it's like I want to be like him you know even though I'm older than him by a year but still I, I wanted to be like him because he was like always doing something new I mean he he's the first person that that taught me how to make beats out of cassette tapes I didn't think that was possible I, I really didn't um the last time I saw him, he was up at my club, and um, he was with um, DJ Shorty, and they were having a competition. Who knew who each other? Who knew me the longest? And he's like, and DJ Shorty was like, I know him longer, no matter what, hands down. And, he, and he's like, Rashawn, come here, like. How long have I known you? Oh, 30 plus years. <laughs> He's like, hands down, you knew me longer. <laughs> um, I keep running into him. He came into the old neighborhood before I moved out, reminiscing, and even like at Andrew Hill when I was coaching at Andrew Hill with football and way back in the days. Um, but yeah, definitely. My mom misses him. I miss him. My brother. All the neighborhood kids back in the days do miss him. But God got you. And I pray for the family. My love to the family, the loved ones of Suit Time, aka Tracks a Million. 18 years old in high school, 22 years old. Um, the first thing I remember about him was his sense. He was working um, at the cell phone kiosk, and that's back when everybody didn't need cell phones, so you had to try to hustle to get somebody's attention. And he was just such a go getter, pulling people in, a lot of charisma, a lot of charm, a lot of gifts. Gift Would send him a message on MySpace to congratulate him. The super hyphy was slapping in the streets everywhere. Hard with his music. And less than a year later, he called me so that we could do some, you know, some stuff in the studio for the slap at it. And it's something I'll always remember is that when he got on, he put people on. Nobody was small. Nobody was too small. 
And San Jose, as far as the Bay Area rap scene, is a city that is underappreciated, undervalued, and he took it and he made it the greatest city in the Bay just by putting it on his back, just by putting so many artists together. Um, it was amazing. We would be at official entertainment studios. Shout out to Big Nick. <laughs> and just sitting there watching his musical process. It was a place you just didn't want to leave. You've seen people come in, in and out the booth. You've seen him just sitting there in the zone. And if you love the music and the music sits at the core of you like it does at the core of me, he was such a major part of it because what he could do with music was otherworldly. I, I think that he's beyond hyphy. Um, you know, he put me on projects, Turf Talks, his Slapbatic album, um, it just always supported my dream. And then eventually I moved to Los Angeles and I hit him right before I went to South Africa. And I was like, I know you hyphy. I called him Tracks Tracks. I know you hyphy, bruh. But I need Africa. I need your Africa. What he came back with, let me know he was the truth. He is the truth. What he came back with, I sent him videos of us marching through the streets of South Africa in a general strike. I was always trying to make him a conscious rapper again. I was trying to turn him into a feminist, always challenging him. I have a documentary that I started filming back in 2006 that I just got back on, like we gotta finish this. Um, but what he came back with, he was sampling chants in Zulu of us marching. If you could just imagine everything he is mixed with Africa. And he was like, should I go off of what you send me or just use my own South African imagination? And I remember just one specific moment where he sent me a beat because we were working on my album. I, had, I have an album exclusively produced by him. And it's gonna be posthumous now. And I clicked play and I was in a dark place. And as soon as I heard the music, it just washed over me and pulled me right out of it. What he could do with sound, what he could do with frequencies, what he could do with tones, that man was magic. Trax was larger than life, but he never made anyone feel small. He's a living legend and you could just see him walking through the city stop at the mall he never acted funny he was a living legend and I just want everyone to know he was beyond hyphy when I when I finished up one song and I sent it to my peoples in South Africa and we did the video and my people's dressed in a traditional gear they made it an official song of the World Federation of Trade Unions which represents 93 million workers in 126 countries and they said this this is our song it was played all over South Africa, all over France, Denmark, Greece. And even as I, I'm sorry, even as I did the work in the streets organizing, he was a soundtrack. I put him on every flyer, he was a soundtrack. So I want y'all to know, he is the streets. Traximillion is legend and I will rep him forever. I love him. Yes, and that man right there, that was like, that was my brother, man. That was my, I, people called me and asked me how I was doing. That's how close me in the studio is. Like, that, that was my heart right there. That was my boy. And um, it, it just, a million was definitely th that man. With a, with a beat, no one is better than him. Uh, that, I spent hours, just real quick. We would wake up in the morning, we would go in, this is how dedicated, he was the most dedicated dude I've ever, ever met in my life. Dedicated when he said he gonna do something, it got done, and if he said he didn't, it didn't get done. It, it, the brother was, I mean, you and his brother, I mean, he was just so dedicated and so focused, it was, it was no doubts. And he had a million tracks, I was there for most of them. I was there for the keyboard, I was there for the keyboard. I was, we was in the house together and the, the boy played the keyboard every, Every day, I used to leave real quick. I used to leave. We used to get up. We used to go in the garage. He'd be in there making a the beat, right? We all real rap to the beat and do whatever, right? I'm like, damn, this is taking all day, right? So I'm going out to do something else. I'll leave, go to a club, 
party. I'll come back at 4 o'clock in the morning, and Trax is still on the damn keyboard. Stay in place. He's not moved at all, right? He has about four or 500 songs. At the boy was the illest, man. That's why, I, that's why I got up here. I don't know. As a person, it, it's no other. He, he just exuberated just good qualities. So you was going to learn something good from the boy. Like it was just, it was, you was, was going to learn how to be nicer to someone or how to help someone and not show, not, not judge anyone. The boy was a, he was a, it's so much you could just say, I can stay here and say about this dude, man. It, it was a great, that was a great dude, man. We lost a great person. But musically, he was the illest thing. Illest, man. I, I was sit, I sat there, and I know, and I could vouch for any. He was the dopest producer I've ever. He was just music, man. The boy was music, and that's. I just want y'all to remember, man. Tracks a million. He was that guy. You're not gonna feel. It's not gonna be nothing like him ever. I'm telling y'all that that guy was that guy. But he was it, man. That was the dude. <laughs> I was like 15 at Gunderson. I was a young girl from East Palo Alto. It was my first time in San Jose. And I felt like a fish out of water. Sutan was one of the first people I met. And we were thick as thieves from that point. <laughs> um, he was such a good person. Sultan was a really good person. From the time we were kids, I was an adult. He just was a good person. He always had my back. He was the only boy ever in life that could come to my mama's house, besides Rock, my brother, that could come to my mama's house and knock on the door and she wouldn't have an attitude. The only person. <laughs> um, we used to like go on dates with other people and at the end of the night come to each other's house and just sit on our cars and talk about the new person and, or sit on the roof. And I would do get contact because I didn't smoke, and they did. <laughs> uh, I was the queen of the contact high, let me tell you. <laughs> Listen, sitting in that room for hours upon hours, and Rock is right. We would be hours upon hours listening to music. He got every. I do not rap, okay? <laughs> and he got me on a couple tracks. <laughs> That's just, he, when people say he brought everybody with him, that's who he always was. I don't want to take up so much time. I hate that I moved. I live in Virginia now. I didn't know a lot of stuff that was happening, but Lord knows I. Excuse me for a moment. We're going to have to keep the time at two minutes. We definitely have a full day today. We want to give consideration to the family. Uh, we're going to have to transition from here to the gravesite. So please, two minutes. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Crystal Calhoun. I'm the mother of Damone Carter, Saad, and Kali Calhoun. And I'm the neighborhood mom for all of that hangout. So I got plenty of memories of Sutan hanging out at my house and, you know, the video games. So I knew him before all of this Tracks a Million. I knew him when he was just that skinny kid just, just coming over just to hang out. And some of the things that I have such fond memories of him as I got pictures, I sent pictures for the family, and I just want to offer my condolences to the family, especially for his son and everything. But when he would come over, it's a house full of kids, so my house was the other recording studio. There's a lot of noise going there all the time. So I had everybody there. 
but it was a safe place and it was a nice place to hang out. And I was always in the kitchen cooking. So everybody else would be in the recording room or playing videos and making noise and doing all this boy stuff. And he would be, if I was in the kitchen, he would be sitting at this one place in my living room on the couch. And one day I just asked him, I'm like, so Sutan, why do you always sit right there? And he's like, okay, mama, so uh, you're in there cooking. And when you say it's time to eat, you're gonna be the first, I'm gonna be the first one to the kitchen. So he always sat the closest to the kitchen and every chance he got, if I seen him or something, I send him a, I send him a pan of food or send his mama a pan of food. He said his mama said I make the best collard greens she ever had. Yeah, 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 so I send that to her. But just, just, just to know him and know him as a young man before all of this and to see this, you know, to come to this and, you know, being a part with Rock and everybody. So I can't remember all, everybody's name right now, but I just want to say thank you guys that I was Mama Crystal of the block and it was a safe place and it was a fun place and it was really noisy too. Okay, so I just want to say thank you to all you guys. Thank you. My name is Makia. I wanted to um, offer my condolences to the family and his uh, close friends. Um, I just wanted to speak on how legendary Trax is in my life. Um, I was 12 years old. I do music. My kids do music now. I was 12 years old. The first time I ever recorded anything or heard myself on a track, he had me on this little beatbox at uh, Miss Tina House. He had me, hot niggas do hot shit and hot things. Hot whips and hot shit. You remember he wrote that rock? Yeah. You know, and uh, we used to hang out at Auntie Crystal House, and um, he believed in me. I didn't even believe in myself. You know, when, he, when I didn't, you know, he was always like, man, you so raw, you got to put this out. And um, I used to go to Shea House. She used to have a keyboard. And, um, yeah, he was just always trying to get me to put my music down and stuff. And, uh yeah, I just don't know, you know, since I was a little kid, you know, so, you know, South Side, had to put it out there, you know what I'm talking about? Man, it's a tough day. Uh, I want to send a special condolences to Daryl. Uh, he's your legacy, and he loved you, and loves you, and Elijah, too. You are his legacy. Uh, he'll live on the most fully within you both. And, uh, me and uh, Sue had an incredible journey, uh, 20 years. <laughs> Rock knows what's up. <laughs> uh, I was his manager during the most exciting times of our life. And it was uh, an honor to be able to be with him every single day during those times and, and witness uh, everyone else recognize what we all knew which was he was a special, special talent. And um, everyone loved him how we loved him because he was so lovable, <laughs> great sense of humor. You could not not like him, period. <laughs> and uh, we had so many good times. I know time is limited and there's so much I want to share, but um, I knew we were on a little quick story when things were happening so fast. And um, I, could, I couldn't be with him because I had to go to New York and I met 50 Cent. And uh, Reflex just kicked in. I handed him the album. And he said, I already have that. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> he said, no, I do. And he took me in the back room, and he showed it to me. He had it. And he said, I listened to that when I wanted to go dumb. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I texted him, we made it. <laughs> We're on. Um, but before the music, during it, after it, um, he was my brother and a kindred spirit and a huge part of my life. When he got sick, we knew time was limited, and we really reconnected, and I'm so grateful for that. And um, the dealing with the sadness, is the overwhelm has been gratitude. We had an incredible friendship, incredible brotherhood, incredible run. Um, so grateful for that. Everyone got to, God gave him a gift, and that gift got to be lived, and people got to see it. And... He'll live for a very long time. As long as there's a rap music radio station in the Bay Area, for sure, he'll live on. And so, Sutan, I love you. 
last words, I saw him a couple months ago and I knew it was bad, but the last words we said to each other were, I love you. I do. So, Sutan, I'll never forget you. Not one second, one day. Thank you for being my friend, being there for me, and uh, putting up with my BS. <laughs> I love you. We all love you. I know I speak for everyone here. We love you, Sutan. Glory to God, prayers and condolences to the family. Uh, my name is Antonio, um, AKA Neo the Gift. Uh, I'm 34 years old. I had the pleasure and honor of uh, meeting tracks when I was about 17, introduced by uh, K9. And um, this was before he had, you know, nationwide success. Um, and I was just a young rapper just trying to find my way. Um, you know, at that time, it, it, it was hard. You don't know who, who to meet, how to shake hands, how to network. Um, he, I just remember meeting him and him being so humble. And um, when he got successful uh, and became a superstar, I always wondered, like, man, how, how would that man treat me if he saw me again? And every time I ever came into contact with him again, it was always love. He was always humble. He still remembered me even though he was larger than life to me, you know what I mean? And um, we ended up being in a group later on called the F&M. And um, that was later on, like in my 20s, he was still a superstar, still a way bigger name than all of us that was involved, but he never made me feel small. And I think that's, that's big when you're young and you want to come up um, to meet somebody like that is inspirational. And he gave me a lot of esteem, you know, just, just from knowing him, uh, from the way he treated me, from the way he kicked it with me. You know, he never made me feel small. Like I said, even though he was larger in life to me, he was this big to me, but you know, he never made me feel little. We would kick it, you know, we would make music, we chop it up, we laugh, you know, and um, he actually told me his first name. He, he didn't, we didn't just go off rap name basis no more. He ended up telling me his name was Sultan. We joked about it a little bit. You know, I'm like, your name is not Sultan, bro. You know, but uh, I was like, Sultan like Kings? You know, he, he was like, yeah, like that. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. You know, so um, I just wanted to come up here and, and, and say, man, it was an honor, excuse me, an honor, a privilege, and a, and a pleasure to know somebody like that. Um, coming from the Bay Area. I'm from Richmond, California. So f for somebody like him all the way, an hour away, man, I, I would drive out here a lot just to come kick it with him and just catch a vibe with him. And um, he was a very inspirational soul. Um, and he, he will definitely be remembered in my heart forever. Unfortunately, he passed away on my son's birthday. And um, today is my mother's birthday. So this is a person that will uh, never be forgotten in my heart, uh, will live with me forever. And man, I just want to tell you, brother, I just wanted to come up here and tell you, I love you, brother. I love you, man. Long live Sultan Tracks a Million Banks. I will keep this brief. Um, I uh, want to say something to everyone here that I haven't heard said yet, which is this guy was nice on the mic, too. Now, all you people, all people here probably know him as a producer. I have a few honors in life. Uh, the first honor I have is um, that I had the opportunity to um, be at his first actual studio sessions and saw this 15-year-old young man after Isidore scared him to death about what a, a terror I was as a producer as far as being the mean guy, um, do a, a song in one take, his verses in one take. And that's when I started to call him One Take Jake. Um, that was my nickname for, for Sue. Sue Tom. Uh, my condolences to you and the family, um, first and foremost. Um, I, I, I do want to also say um, one of the best stories I can think of is when we were recording that demo. Um, I also got the opportunity to see him produce his first song in the studio. And um, what he did was he used, I'm going to age myself here, Barney Miller theme song to Barney Miller. And I remember looking back at that time thinking, and this is me and my, you know, I'm a super producer at that time, right? And I'm like, oh, that's not that, uh, but 
but then in my back of my mind, I was like, it's kind of hot. And that became one of their signature songs called Where's Steve? Um, and the other honor I had was that Sutan also continued to um, treat me um, in the same capacity um, later in like 2017, we got together and he still rapped on my tracks. He didn't have to do that, but he did. And you guys don't understand, this guy on the mic is a terror. He would often write me on Instagram, just DM me and be like, hey, I this beat it reminded me of something that you would make. Um, how does this sound? Or ask me how to use a piece of equipment or whatever. Um, so to echo what everybody said, this, this is a very humble person very happy to have been a part of his life. I'm very happy that he is a part of the Bay Area fabric and the history of the Bay Area. Um, you'll be missed. I always call you nephew. Um, you'll always be that to me. Um, but um, we love you, Sutan. And uh, this is a very sad day for all of us, but I know that Sutan would not want any of us to be unhappy. He'd want us to get in all of our cars and play his music. He want all of us to come go out right now and and and, and have that, that that glowing smile on our minds um, as we go on about our lives and remember him. So I thank you all for being here and uh, it's just my honor to be here to have to actually have to be able to speak um, to my nephew Sue. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Shane, uh, a.k.a. Shizzle. I just want to give uh, my condolences to Daryl and Elijah and the rest of the family. Um, Trax was a real brother to me. I met him back in probably 2007 at the studio in Big Nick, and Fab was there that night, and he actually gave me an opportunity to engineer for him. And even though he was a better engineer than anybody I ever met before, he still gave me that opportunity to, to work with him. And I'll be honest, I sucked at it, and he told me I did. <laughs> but he gave me an opportunity to DJ for him and just go on to him to his shows and be a part of whatever he was doing. So I just want to say thank you because I continued that career, and you kind of kept me fighting for what I wanted to do. Um, you always stayed working every time I was around you. You were always making beats, 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 beats. You was on the couch making beats. For hours, I go to sleep and you'd be still on the couch making beats. Four or five o'clock in the morning, just sitting there dozing off, waking up, doing it again. So I know that's what you love to do, bro. So I'm glad that you're in peace now. And um, just want to say I love you, bro. CJ Porter, um, one of Trax's artists. Um, I met Trax when I was 17. Um, started off as a rapper and stuff like that. And I can remember he used to see me harmonize and stuff. He's like, hey, sing something for me. Like, you know how to sing something? I was like, nah, not really, man. I was like, you know, I dibble and dabble a little bit. He was like, write a song me hear something like that. It's like, come new. And I did. And he was like, bro, when you come to my studio, don't rap no more. Come in here, straight R&B, singer. I need you as a singer, man. <laughs> and ever since that day, I've just been singing. Singing. And I can't stop. And it's like, just from me singing, I've been finding so many different octaves to hit. He's been motivating me so much, inspiring me. Every time I feel like I can't do it, he boosts my faith back up. I remember nights coming to his house and coming to the studio, to the club, and just being with him, calling him up every weekend just to, just to kick it, you know? He was like a brother to me, a real big brother to me. And it's just crazy that he's gone right now. But I guarantee that I will live on his legacy within his music. 
I want to thank you, Trax. I love you, man. You my brother, my friend, you my sensei. Appreciate you. First of all, um, my condolences to the family and friends that and everyone who knew Trax. <sighs> I was I was really young when I met him. I knew my, knew Trax through. Uh, to my father, Oscar Alex Menace, <sighs> and I'm very unprepared. I was really un unprepared to come up here, and with my speech impediment and everything, I have autism. But you know, one thing I remember from Trax is that he was the humblest guy I ever knew, and I kind of wanted to be just like him. I wanted to be in his music videos every time there was a view shoot going around, you know? Uh, but I was too scared, I was too shy. I never got to do it, and I'll probably never ever get to do it. But he, my dad would always come and take me to the studio when he picked me up from school. I was around, it was around middle school when this happened. And one time, he took, he tracks and inspired me to get into the booth and sing my own song. <laughs> It was trash, obviously. <laughs> and I never really liked rap music. Well, not anymore as I used to, but I'll still listen to Trax's music and, and everything. And it opened up to a real passion of mine that I actually have a grasp on, and that's voice acting. <clears throat> and I'm 16 years old now, and that's crazy. And I gotta set an example for my brothers, my sisters, my siblings, my everyone around me. And I'm about to get out into the world and do shit for myself. That's crazy. I'm not prepared for this. God bless. God bless you all. And I love you, Trax. Uh, how's everybody doing? That was amazing. Um, my name's Daquan. Some of you guys might know me as Flammy. Um, I was basically Trax's nephew. Um, his baby mama, Shay, that's my, that's my auntie. I remember him living on Latory Lane, and uh, I think I was about 10 years old, or eight years old. And uh, you know, as kids, you're supposed to stay out of grown folks' business, and I wasn't. I was sitting on the couch watching Ace High cook up, man, and I remember them making this song called Schizo. And uh, to this very day, I sing that song in the shower, and it sparked something in me. I remember one night, he was like, Daddy, come here. I sat on the stool and recorded a song with me and every single one of my cousins on the hook called Get Up. Uh, to this very day, we can't find a CD, but that was, he sparked something in me. Um, when I told him... <laughs> When I told him that I was going to be a dad myself, he said, is it a boy or a girl? And I told him it was a boy. His eyes lit up, and he said, I'm so happy for you. Because not only as a musician, <laughs> but as a man, when you have a son, shit changes. And you grow up quick. And he just said, Dad, you about to be the greatest dad. <laughs> ah. And I'm just so grateful for him. And... I just know that, you know, when it's all said and done, I'm going to be the best dad I could be. And I just pray that my locks be able to pass his one day, too. So, thank you. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Everybody's sitting here and they looking kind of sad. But... Sometimes looking down on us, he's smiling. He done made it. He's gone to that city called the city of no more. No more pain. No more suffering. No more cancer. No more heartaches. No more pain. What I'm up here, I'd like for all of you all to do when you leave is a song called, May the Work I've Done Speak for Me. I'm going to say it again. May the work I've done Speak for me. 
It's three verses. Each verse, I want you all to focus on this young man up here. He said, when I've done the best I can, but my friends don't understand, may the work I've done speak to them. Second verse, it says, may the service I've done speak for me. It says, when the best I try to live, my mistakes, he will forgive. May the service I give speak for me. One more verse, the third and final verse. It says, may the work I've done speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing to say. May the life I live speak for me. And the chorus says, this work I've done, it seems so small. But sometimes it seems like, like nothing at all. But when I stand before my Lord, I want to hear him say, well done. Well done. Well done. Thy good, thy faithful servant. Come on in. Come on in to God's glory with my Lord. Kareem, we used to run the same streets from San Jose to Frisco, Oakland, all around. And I'm so proud of this guy. Look, he brought all the cities over here. Everybody's here. He had the biggest heart. Anytime he was in the room, he'd light it up. Even, even when we weren't doing music, when we, our sons, me and my, me and his son played football together when they're since they're like five. Big baggy clothes, but they were solid. Me and him would always talk all the time. Like, what are we gonna tell our sons today? And then the moms, they used to be like, be nice to our boys. I'm like, what? We try to turn them to soldiers. And, and that's what he did. And I remember one time, uh, me and my wife, we were in Oak Ridge Mall in South San Jose. And we walked by uh, the cell phone place right by Mr. Rags before he worked there. And he, his eyes were so big like a bullfrog. And then we're like, I'm like, what's up, man? He's like, what's he, what's he talking about? He's like, I just made this beat for Keith. And we on now. I'm like, oh, okay. This is so, he almost jumped over the damn, oh, sorry, don't say that. That wasn't customer. <laughs> jumped over the uh, counter and like, we, we out of here. And I just appreciate all the time I ever, I'm blessed to be here. I'm so proud that I, you guys let me come here today. I, I really love you guys. I don't know all you guys, but the ones I know, I love you on everything. You already know. And uh, I remember one time, I don't know what year it was, but he told me, like, he almost talked to my, started talking to my sister. And I'm like, hold on, pop. hold on. You, you lucky I love you, because other than that, I would have been mad. But, you know, I'm like, I just thank, praise God for being here, and thank you guys all. And, hey, we got to stick together. We got to stick together. Stop doing all this city to city, phone. Let's make Cali, put it, keep it on the map like he kept it. My name is Tara Lynn, and I first met Sutan my freshman year in high school. And I remember he was doing it back then, just making beats off his mouth, just beatboxing while everybody was rapping during the, at the, in the quad during lunchtime when they started doing the uh, DJs coming every Friday and playing music. Tracks was out there. He recorded my first track when he was on when I was, he was on 10th and Taylor. <laughs> he's always stayed humble. He's never forgot anyone. I would see him at the football field when our kids would play football. Then I'd be like, what's up, Trax? He'd be like, what's up, T? What's good? He was such a beautiful person. And I'm going to miss you so much, Sutan. 
It's an honor to watch our kids hang out. It's funny just watching our kids grow up and hang out together. They're our mini me's. <laughs> Thank you for putting the bay on, Be being that guy that started the hyphy movement, put 408 San Jose on the map. <laughs> You did that, you did that. I'm so proud of you. Rest with the angels, Sultan. Uh, before you start, um, this will be the last group as we, in respect for the family, will move forward in the service. My man, Keith. Yeah. How y'all doing, man? Um, I wouldn't have felt right if I didn't say nothing. You know what I mean? At, tr at Trax funeral, it's a trip because uh, all this time I didn't even know Trax's real name. You know, till today. You know, but uh, it was '04 when he gave me the beat to uh, Super Hyphy. I did a show in um, San Jose, and he was there. He gave me a CD. It had three songs on there, and uh, one of them was the Super Hyphy beat. You know. Uh, it wouldn't be no super, it wouldn't be no hyphy movement without him, you know what I mean? Uh, Trax was just a great person, you know what I mean, inside and out. He never changed, always was the same, you know? Uh, you know, I just, I just wanted to say something, man, for my guy, man. Um, took a major blow, you know, that was a major loss we just took. I almost lost my life in 2017, so it's a blessing that I'm here to say something that tracks from me, you know. I just wanted to come show my respect and my condolences for the guy. He's a legend. He's uh, everything, like the lady said earlier, he's beyond the hyphy movement, man. He was just talented, one of the best producers I've ever met, you know what I mean, and what he done. That's all I gotta say, man. I love y'all, man. Okay, we're gonna have the call to the acknowledgement reading by Tanya Brown, and then we're going to have a letter from the family read by JoJo um, in a couple words. As we close these special remarks, I'd like to share some cards and acknowledgments of condolences from, for the family. And I'd like to say I also knew him as Sutan, and I met him um, when he at parties at his Auntie Jackie's house. I've known his Auntie Jackie for some 27 years now, when I was still in college. And um, I knew him as Sutan, and whenever he was at the house for parties and we were having get-togethers, he was always very down-to-earth. He, as everyone has said, he was one of the humblest superstars you would ever meet. And when we would all get, to get together, he was simply family. The ones we love are never gone from our hearts. They vis visit us in old stories. They meet us in our dreams. They show up in a song or maybe a familiar face. They speak to us in moments of decisions, in times when we know they'd be proud. They live on in the good things we do for the world and for each other. And they're here to gently remind us every time we miss them how much we were loved and always will be with sympathy for your loss. A journey remembered. As some people journey through life, they leave footprints wherever they go. Kindness and love, courage and compassion, humor and inspiration, joy and faith. Even when they are gone, we can still look back and clearly see the trail they left behind. A trail of bright hope that invites us to follow. Praying you will be comforted with precious memories and God's presence to care for you and your loss. Auntie Jackie and family, I know these past few years, you were so essential in as taking part in taking care of Sutan's mother. 
He spoke so highly of you and always expressed how grateful he was for your love and help. I want to express how deeply sorry I am for the loss of Sutan. I know that he was surrounded by love during his transition. Blessed are those who walk in the light of your presence, Psalm 89. My deepest sincere condolences to you and all of Satan's family. I pray that heavens comfort you all during this time. Tracks his friend Hanaya, Naya more and more. I'm free. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following paths God made for me. I took his hand. I heard him call. Then turn and bid farewell, farewell to all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to sing, to play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found peace at close of play. And if my parting left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Yes, these things too I will miss. Be not burdened deep with sorrow. I wish you sunshine for tomorrow. My life's been full. I've savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with your grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wants me now. He set me free. Thanks and acknowledgments. Thank you for your kind expression of sympathy and thoughtfulness. It is deeply appreciated and will always be remembered. The comforting messages, the floral tributes, and other expressions of kindness during this time of bereavement will forever be remembered. May God bless you, Daryl, Elijah, and family. Good afternoon. I think it's, I don't know what time it is. Okay, before I start, I wanted to just say a remark uh, before I read a letter from the New Jersey family. And I'm so nervous right now. I know tracks would tell me, use your voice, even when he couldn't speak. He said, use your voice. And I just want to thank you for the journey for pushing me, for comforting me when I was trying to comfort him. And thank you for everything, and I'll do it again. the family from New Jersey and they wrote the San Jose family birthed tracks a million but the New Jersey family birthed Sultan Hanif Banks we are deeply saddened by the loss of our cousin our nephew Sui Sauce our baby Sutan in 2019, he came back to Jersey and became the glue that pulled us back together. The third generation of Robert and Anita Banks. His notoriety, unknown to many of us. He was just one of us, family, and that was enough. Our hearts are filled with joy, knowing that our God gave us Sutan for 42 years and respectfully tracks a million to the world. As believers, we find comfort knowing that he is <laughs> that he is out of pain and has transitioned to a better place. We have memories that death cannot steal and love that remain in our hearts forever. We would like to offer scripture during this time of mourning from John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, also believe in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I was going there to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. And you may also be where I am. And I was sent from the family from New Jersey. And I just want to say, we're all here for the same reason, to celebrate his life. And when I say he fought a good fight, he fought a good fight. He fought a great fight. And all he wanted to do was make music. And I love you so much. And that's it. <laughs> so. the Emmanuel Choir.
God, hide me behind the cross that these, your people, may not see me, but see you. They may not hear me, but they'll hear you. Have your own way. Speak to the lives of your believers as well as unbelievers. Do the work now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. He's worthy to be praised. I won't keep you too long, but there has to be a word from the Lord. Amen. We believe that God loves all of us, and we knew that God loved Sutan. He a believer. He understood who God was. Um, where I, I didn't meet him at the club. I didn't meet him at the sound room. I didn't meet him in the community, but I met him at church. Somebody say amen. 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 We may not get too many amens in that area, but we're going to preach anyhow. If you pray, I'll preach. I believe one side of his life, he honored God. In order for him to be so um, talented and gifted and was a genius in his own right and musical genius, producer, composer, and rapper, he had to know something about God. God empowered him to do what he was doing. Amen? And so we also want to give credit to his dad, Brother Darrow, and his family because they taught him in the right way. Amen? To have humility on that level, you have to have been taught and have to see it in somebody in your family such as your parents. Amen. We're grateful to be a part of this auspicious occasion. We don't want to bore you. There is a word that God put on my heart. Just want to look at it real quickly. It's out of 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 through 8. Um, it says, let's stay where you are, uh, 4. 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. It says, as for me, my life has already been poured out as a time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but it's for all who eagerly look forward to his appearance. And I want to just talk for a few moments about fighting the good fight. Amen. This, in this particular... Rome, he... was letting Timothy know that you got to stay in this fight. You got to fight the good fight. You can't give up your faith. You can't give up on your on your health. You can't give up on what people say. You got to stay in the race. And so as we look at this particular passage, the first area of scripture is Paul says that I sacrifice uh, my whole life. I give my life as a sacrifice offering. And I thought about that. Paul been shipwrecked. He'd been beat up, he'd been imprisoned, he'd been um, 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 ridiculed for doing what was right. And then I thought, I said, Sutan did what was right in every way of dealing with people. He was humble. We, we talked about his humility. We talked about the love, how he invested in others. He gave his life. He gave his life to doing what was right. Maybe not in the traditional church sense, because sometimes we don't see what's right when it, we think it has to be like structured church. No, 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 no. God works outside the church. And God used him outside the church. He offered his life. It, this means that he, like Paul said, he poured out his life as a liquid, as water, as oil to, to help others. And I see uh, Sutuan did the same thing. Not only that. Sutuan, he also knew that his departure was near. He knew that he was going to have to transition out of this life into a new life. And from what I understand, he got with his Aunt Jackie, and she began to take care of him the last days, and they began to talk about Jesus, talk about God, talk about Allah, talk about the Lord. And he was preparing himself for his departure. And I stopped by to tell you on this day, I know he, he had a great accomplishments, but you got to get it right with God. 
We can't leave here not getting it right with God. We can be the truth. We can, we can accomplish some things, but we got to get it right with the master. I'll give one more amen. Yeah, that, you with me. Come on, somebody over there is with me. You have to get it right with the master. Whatever we do, we have to do it unto the Lord. And it's not the most popular message these days. We want to stay hypey and do all kind of other stuff. But, but I, I stand here to tell you, I had that life. That life only goes so far. But when you get right with God, you have a sense of peace. You have a sense of love. You have a sense of satisfaction. You have a sense of, of knowing that you're going to be with him forever. And that's what it's about. So he knew that his departure was coming. He began to prepare himself. He began to prepare, prepare young Timothy to help him in this mission of sharing the gospel. I believe Sutan knew his time was coming short. So he poured all he could into his son. He poured all he could into his family, his friends. He left a wonderful, beautiful legacy, but I believe that he made it right with God. Amen. Not only that, he, he fought this good fight. Paul was, was reminded that he was a soldier. It's one thing to be a soldier for the It's one thing to be a soldier for some gang. It's to be a soldier for the Lord. He was a, Paul was a soldier, and I believe Sutan was a soldier in his own right for God. And in that being a soldier, he fought the good fight. He, he knew that he was getting sick, he wasn't feeling good, but he kept fighting. He knew that, that, that the cancer was going to succumb him, but he kept fighting. He kept fighting till the end. And that's what we have to do. We have to fight for our kids. We got to fight for our families. We got to fight for righteousness, for freedom. We got to fight. He fought the good fight. And he stayed in a race. That's what I like about it. He didn't give up. He didn't complain. He didn't blame nobody. He stayed in the race. Many of us, we get out of the starting blocks, but we fall start. Some of us have false started. Some of us are running on the line. Some of us are not obeying the rules. But he stayed in the race. Can somebody say stay in the race? Stay in the race. He finished the race. But what I like about it is he's kept the faith. It, it takes faith to do what he has accomplished. He didn't do it on his good looks. He didn't do it just on his genius, uh, gifted skills. He kept the faith in God. See, sometimes we become religious. We go to church religiously. But I believe he had a relationship. And that's what Jesus is about. He's about relationship. Knowing him for yourself and your own way. He had a relationship with him. He stayed in the race, but he kept the faith. Check this out. I'm going to my seat. Not only that he, he, um, he sacrificed himself as an offering, he was, knew his departure was coming, he stayed in the fight, he finished the race, he kept the faith, but he was ready to receive his reward. He was ready to get his reward. He was ready to get his prize. He was ready to get his crown of righteousness. He was ready for the Lord to say, uh, you've done well, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. You've been ruler over many. I want you to come up a little bit higher so I can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I want to make you ruler over many. Don't you want to hear well done? When our life is done down here, there's another life on the other side. He's preparing a place for prepared people. I believe Sutan prepared himself for that place that we might live with Jesus eternally. I say to you, I say to the family members, say to the friends, stay in the fight. Keep fighting. Fight against negativity. Fight against unrighteousness. Fight against hate. Stay in the fight and keep loving each other. Keep cultivating each other. For the He's going to send you some rainfall. He's going to send you. 
peace. I want you to move and move forward. God wants you to press towards the mark, which is the goal, the high calling in Christ Jesus. Not failures. Keep fighting. Don't stop fighting. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to home in the Mirror Avenue, the back of your, it's definitely going to be a reposition there. We're going to ask all the officials to come and help us transition. God bless you. May God keep you. Stay with you. Bless you.